Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the hidden or possibly hidden features inside of the Your Arcade page. So let's take a look at that page. Over here we have the schedule button, which most of you are probably familiar with. If you click on schedule, that will bring up the scheduling pop-up. We won't go into that today. That will be for a future video. Under the Your Arcade name here, if you were to click on that and you had multiple arcades, you will be able to choose which arcade you're going to be controlling from here. I only have one arcade set up here, so I would not be able to show you that for now. Clicking on the Chrome button down here brings up some local browser settings. So this is only local to this particular instance. First of all, some of you may also be aware or already be aware of the timeline view, which we are in right now. But if we turn off the timeline view, that brings us to the standard slash station view where we see all of our stations here. Bring back the menu here. You can see, first of all, I've got the option to repeat alarms. So if I want the alarm to repeat the one that customers are trying to notify you they need help, I can turn that uh, on or leave it off to have it only alert once. Uh, this disable hints button, you'll see that if I hover over, let's close this, if I hover over the buttons, you'll find that it is giving me a hint as to what that is. But if I want to disable the, the hints, I can turn that off. And if I go back, you can see that the hints are gone. The next is maximize session controls. So if I turn that off, pay attention to these buttons down here. If I turn that off, it'll they'll all become little buttons. And if I hover over, then they will change to full buttons there. The smaller minimize buttons are better for a, uh, a mobile screen. Now both uh, minimize, I'm sorry, maximize session controls and disable uh, button hints, those are specific to the standard view. Those are not applicable to the uh, the timeline view. So if you use this view, then those might be useful for you. Show panic button will bring up the panic button here so that if there's an emergency, that will allow you to stop the session, uh, all sessions, and alert the customers. Or you can turn it off, of course. Update VR stations is useful if you want to trigger an update across multiple stations. Uh, it will look at the stations that are online, and right now the only online station is this is my station one. So if I click on that, that tells me it's already up to date, and I wouldn't want to be updating it. But of course, the stations that need the update will be able to be updated. Going down here, we've got the voice notice on uh, on help. So when somebody makes a, a notification or a request for help. It will tell you the PC name and then it says needs your attention, but that can uh, be changed. Uh, so if we want to just make that, oops, we can make that changed. Uh, playing on audio on file session end will allow you to uh, play a sound at the end of a session. Uh, you can delete this if you don't want any sounds to play at the end of a session. Uh, or if you wanted to, you can have it uh, play a different sound. It just needs to be a pl publicly accessible uh, URL. And then call for help audio file. This will be the one that repeats when the repeating sound alarm is on. Uh, again, same idea. If you want to remove it, just delete it from here. Or if you want to change it, you can change it to a different, uh, different uh, sound. Let's close that. Oh, actually, before we close this, we want to take a look. You'll see that down here, while this button is clicked, while this, this menu is open, there is a drag sessions to reorder. So right now, these sessions, when they first start, are in alphabetical order. But if I want to change them, what I can do is drag them like this. And let's just say out of some crazy order that I want here. And once I close this menu, that'll put them in that order. Again, this is only applicable in the standard slash station view. So let's go back to our timeline view and talk about a few things that are in the timeline view. First of all, you'll see that the, uh, and some of you may already know this, but green means that the uh, the station is connected uh, and is online. Purple usually means that it's offline, with the exception of virtual stations, which will always show offline because they uh, they're never really technically online. But green means that it's uh, the access point is running and is communicating properly. And then of course you see all your sessions here, and if you hover over them, you've got some information that pops up. But the potentially hidden part of it is that if you click on the name, that'll bring up the customer information that you might find when you go into the customer view. 
Here you can schedule, do a walk-in session, sell some goods. You can find out information about the customer and you can manage a customer from here. And this is useful if you want to check a customer's history because also other than viewing sessions from here, if, you were, if the customer had history, that would also show the top 10 games the customer has played. Now, before we move on to the next part, let's show you a few more of these things up here. So this button right here, this command looking prompt is for command, uh, command calls. You'll see that I've got two different command calls set up here, relaunch game and a start an OBS recording, which triggers, either one will trigger some sort of a script of some sort. The restart, uh, the relaunch game is uh, set up automatically for everybody and is in case a game uh, stops for some reason uh, outside of the customer's control, you can relaunch the game and it'll relaunch the last game played. And Start OBS has a script that allows you to, uh, it's not an automated one, uh, this is one that I have created, uh, but there's a variety of different things you can do. So this will trigger a script that does something with uh, OBS. The next button here, some of you probably are already familiar with, it allows you to either wake on LAN or power down uh, a physical station. So my quest and the virtual station would not be listed here, but with my uh, station two not on, I can click turn on and that will trigger the wake on LAN. And if you have that set up properly, that will turn it on, or I can shut down the station uh, remotely as well. There is also the option to shut down all or turn on all, so it'll automate the process across multiple stations. And if you want to find out the wake on lane, there is a button here that will uh, take you to the manual so that you can check on how that is set up. And lastly, we have this button here, which does one primary thing. It either enables or disable, disables the content events button. So that way your staff doesn't accidentally update games that maybe you didn't want to or doesn't download a game uh, if you don't want them to, that sort of thing. But the one thing that has a sort of a hidden feature is the send refresh to all stations. So this allows you to actually send a refresh to all stations and what is probably the quickest way to do that. And that will trigger a refresh across all the stations. Now, coming back to here, if we were to click on this, you have a few different options. First of all, if you want this particular PC to join a different sessions voice chat, you can do that by using this. You can also start an individual game. So if you wanted to start just one game across one particular station, you can certainly do that by finding the game and clicking on start. And then you can also send a voice prompt to the customer uh, via this, which is a text to voice speech thing, uh, which is similar to our announcements already in the system. And then manage, you're gonna have a few different things. Uh, one is you can send a remote refresh to that station so that if you click this, that'll trigger the refresh. This, if you remember, has is, is similar to the button that we saw earlier, which is the command prompt and allows you to send a command prompt to a specific station. It won't pop up here because it is a virtual station, so there's nothing that can be sent for that. I can trigger recording if I have the recording set up. I can check the processes on that particular station. I can check game usage and I can trigger the power on or off. And again, this won't work for this particular station because it is a virtual station. Now, if we were going to go into the standard slash station view versus the timeline view, you'll see some of the same things there as well. In this case, you're going to see a green dot versus a purple slash uh, green bar, and this will indicate that a station is online. And if you want to access some of those hidden parts of the station, uh, you can click on the station name and that will bring up that same menu with the session tab and the manage tab. And then you'll be able to access those same things that you would in the, uh, the timeline view. And that pretty much covers a lot of the hidden stuff that is inside of the your arcade page. I hope that you find that helpful. And if you have any other questions, feel free to send us an email at info at synthesisvr.com. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.